Hello and welcome to Crossing the 49th, the cross-border tax and financial planning podcast. I'm your host, Phil Hogan, and today we're going to talk about Roth IRAs in Canada. Okay, today we're going to talk about Roth IRAs and how they relate to individuals living in Canada and those that are actually moving to Canada. So we'll start first. Um, for those that are not familiar and those that you know are not U.S. citizens or those that had not lived in the U.S. previously, they're likely not would not be very familiar with what a Roth IRA is. And essentially a Roth IRA is very similar to our TFSA up in, in Canada. Now that being said, we, we essentially got the idea for our TFSA from um, the Roth IRA structures in the US. So a Roth IRA is essentially um, a tax deferred account where you put after-tax money into this account and it can grow tax-free. So all the um, capital gains, interest, dividends, any earnings uh, internally within the Roth, um, they grow tax-free, compounded, um, until such time as you actually take the money out. And the money that's actually withdrawn from the account is tax-free as well. Uh, so a couple of details on the account. Um, the contribution limits for uh, uh, Roth IRAs, uh, $6,000 a year or $7,000 if, um, if you're over 50. There are some limitations for those with high incomes um, where you wouldn't be able to um, contribute. Uh, but for everybody else, uh, you have that uh, six to $7,000 contribution limit. And we're not going to get into the kind of nitty gritty of Roth IRAs and the technicals and the, and the mechanics of Roth IRAs today. We're really going to talk about Roth IRAs from a perspective of um, the Canadian tax system and, and specifically those that are actually moving to, um, to Canada from, from the U.S. Um, so let's, let's, let's really just start there. Let's talk about, you know, what, what are we looking at when we're, um, we're speaking to clients that are moving from the U.S. to Canada um, and specifically when they have a Roth IRA. And of course, our clients have many different types of accounts and assets when they move uh, to Canada from the U.S. They'll have Roth accounts, they'll have IRA accounts, they'll have 401ks, they'll have, um, they'll have uh, education plans, they'll have real estate. But for the purposes of this conversation, we're really just going to talk about Roth IRAs. So um, once again, we talk about this all the time. The planning is is much more advantageous if we can do it before individuals move to Canada. Once somebody's you know maintain or when somebody's um, developed residency in Canada and they become a Canadian tax resident, then a lot of this planning honestly goes out the door. So we want to talk to people before they move to Canada so we can do a lot of this planning. So for an individual with a Roth IRA before they move, there are a couple. Um, couple items to consider and, and and these are questions we get we get all the time so maybe the first question would be um, is it possible to um, convert the IRA to an RSP um, this is often after after they move um, another planning consideration is should I convert some of my traditional IRA to a Roth IRA before um, I enter Canada so let's let's talk about both of them. and let, let's let's start first with the um, the actual conversion of the traditional IRA to the Roth IRA. Now, once again, when I, when I talk about these items, these are very general conversations um, and it really require us to sit down with the clients and look at their situation before we make a determination on what we need to do. But for very general purposes, in cases where the individual is moving from the U.S. to Canada and specifically if they're, if they're moving in a year or and you can plan for this many years so you might have somebody that knows they're moving to Canada in the next three years so that, that that's a good that's a good way to frame this because a lot of times you can do this over a number of years so let's say you have somebody that's moving from the US to Canada in a number of years and for those three years before they move their income is going to be quite low so let's say they just finished their working years they're retired their incomes dropped um, and let's use for purposes of this conversation um, some tax rates just to illustrate this. So let's say their tax rate in the U.S. is 10% before they move. They could convert, and you know the technicals around converting uh, IRAs to Roth IRAs we're not going to get into today. But you know they could convert some of their or you know a big chunk of their um, uh, traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. And this is the way this would look, and this is why we would want to maybe consider this. So let's say you have you know pick a number. Let's say you have a hundred thousand dollar um, traditional IRA and let's say you don't have anything in, in, in your Roth or a small amount currently you take that hundred thousand dollar IRA you deregister it from the IRA and you pay tax on that IRA and let's assume that you're you're over 59 and a half and, and you're not paying a penalty on that amount deregister the hundred thousand dollars from the IRA you pay tax at 10 percent you pay ten thousand dollars tax up front uh, for um, that IRA deregistration and then you convert that um, into your um, Roth IRA um, 
And once again, we're just using general figures here just for illustration purposes. You, it could be $10,000, but let's just, uh, for purposes of this conversation, 10% 10, 10 tax on that um, Roth conversion. Now, when you move to Canada, you'll be able to move to Canada, file a special election, which we'll actually talk about um, in, in a few minutes here. And that Roth IRA will be deferred from Canadian taxation as well as US taxation. And the idea here is eventually, once you withdraw that money from the account, you've already paid your 10% tax and you won't pay any further tax. So that's the total amount of tax you'll pay on that amount. And, and what we would normally do is you're, you're contrasting that with the amount of tax you would normally pay if you kept the money in your IRA. So that same example, let's say you have the $100,000 IRA that comes across the border when you move to Canada. And, and for illustration purposes here, let's say your Canadian tax rate is 20%. So your US tax rate was 10%. Now it's 20%. So if you didn't convert the IRA to a Roth IRA, you move to Canada, you started drawing down the IRA. So let's say you're paying 20% tax on those withdrawals each year. And of course, you'd pay a level of Canadian tax and a level of US tax, and you'd get a credit on your Canadian tax return for the US tax paid. But for purposes of this conversation, because uh, you're really just paying the high rate, highest rate country after credits. So you pay 20% tax on that uh, IRA uh, distribution because it wasn't converted. We're just comparing. It wasn't converted to um, a Roth IRA. So you paid 20% tax instead of 10% tax. So it's that, it's that delta. It's that difference between the 20% and the 10% that we've actually saved um, uh, because we did this planning and converted the IRA to a Roth IRA before. So if you're thinking of moving to Canada and you have a traditional IRA, that's a really good planning mechanism. We've really helped a lot of clients with this where knowing what their tax rate is going to be in Canada going forward, um, the difference between that and what it was um, before they left the U.S. Now, of course, this doesn't work very well if your rate in the U.S. is quite high before you move to Canada, but there's this really nice sweet spot where if you're in retirement years and you're coming up to Canada where that, um, that can make a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, Possible IRA conversions are um, a huge planning mechanism that we, we like to use. So let's talk about once you've landed in Canada. So whether you've converted the IRA to a Roth IRA or you had a Roth IRA existing before you entered Canada. So now you're in Canada, you're filing both Canadian and US tax returns. What do you need to do for the Roth IRA? So the Roth IRA is actually quite unique in that CRA um, a number of years ago, um, and you can see this on the um, information bulletin. So they put out, um, and how time flies here, um, I didn't realize it was this, this long ago, but yeah, so September 24th, 2010, they issued um, a technical news bulletin number 43, where they discuss what needs to happen with uh, Roth IRAs when you um, move to Canada, uh, or if you had a Roth IRA before this um, this technical bulletin was out. So let's just go through this bulletin, and we'll um, and I'll, we'll go through quickly, and I'll show you what this election looks like. So the purpose of this um, this technical news bulletin is really just to um, outline and discuss what Roth IRAs are. They uh, they talk about the taxation of Roth IRAs in Canada. Um, they talk a little bit about the structure, foreign reporting, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but. The um, Roth IRAs are not required to be reported on T1135 forms, as we discussed earlier. The real important part of this, this document here is, um, is the election and how to file it. So the idea here is you'll be able to file an election with CRA that will allow you to have the Roth IRA be deferred from taxation in, in, indefinitely um, and, and be able to withdraw the money tax-free. tax, tax free. Um, So the... Now, before before this election was was um, or this uh, news bulletin was released, there was a, there were some deadlines. But really, now that we, this is already out, uh, anybody that's uh, come to Canada with a Roth IRA, they need to file this election in the year that their tax return is due for Canadian purposes. So, what do you put on this election? And we'll show you an example of this um, after we uh, after we read through this. So, the election needs to be made, and they'll. Um, the election needs to be uh, made with the, the the following information. So your name and your address, your social insurance number and your social security number, the name and address of the Roth IRA trustee uh, and plan administrator, uh, the Roth IRA account number, and the date it was established. You also need to include the date you became a resident of Canada, the balance of the Roth um, at 2008 or whatever um, date uh, you became um, a resident, uh, the amount of the um, first Canadian contribution, which hopefully you haven't made a Canadian contribution because that will um, that will revoke the election, and the um, 
And then just, just a statement that you're making this election under Article 18 of the treaty. So Article 18 of the treaty allows for pe certain pension income and pension accounts to be deferred from taxation for tax, for tax purposes. So that's what they want you to file. So here's an example of that election. So essentially, this is an election that you draft, and it includes all the information that we talked about here. So we'd have the Article 18 um, election, name, social insurance number, social security number, your address, the information that you're making the election under. So we have um, balance of the Roth, you would include the amount, uh, uh, sorry, balance of the Roth at the end of the year, balance of the Roth, um, the date you became a resident of Canada, the name and address of the firm where the Roth is being held, uh, the date the plan was, um, was established, the account number, the date you became a resident, um, the date of the first Canadian contributions and total distributions received during the year. Now, the one there that's really important to, to note is this election works if you file the election and you have not made a contribution while a Canadian resident. So what you can't do is you can't come over with a $10,000 Roth IRA and make a contribution to the Roth IRA and then defer the Roth IRA. So the real important, two important parts here, file the election, certainly, and do not make a Canadian contribution. Now, if you do those two things, then your Roth IRA will be deferred from taxation um, going forward, which is which is great because, as we all know, uh, the compounding effect of money. If you can leave money in there tax free, just like our TFSAs. Once again, not not very much different at all. Uh, we just don't have to file a, an election for our TFSAs. So that's the election you need to make when you actually um, move to Canada and you um, uh, you have a Roth IRA. So question is, when do you make this election? So you make this election um, and it, this, this election will be due by the due date of your Canadian return, which can be different for most, in, for, for some individuals. So what you would, uh, most individuals uh, due date for their Canadian tax returns, April 30th. So that's the, the main due date. We don't have elections or we don't have extensions rather in Canada. Um, like we do in the U.S. So in the U.S., you can extend from April 15th to June 15th, and then from June 15th to October 15th. We don't have that. We just have separate deadlines for individuals. So we have the April 30th deadline, and then we have a June 15th deadline for those that are self-employed, and there's some other individuals that get to June 15th. But generally speaking, April 30th, if you're not self-employed, and if you're self-employed, June 15th. So for self-employed individuals that come to Canada with Ross, you have till June 15th of the year, you're following your, um, your, your year end. So if you move to Canada in 2021, you would have till June 15th, 2022 to file the Roth election. And then if you're not self-employed, you'd have till April 30th of 2022 to file the Roth election. Okay, so next, Let's talk about uh, reporting the Roth IRA on 1135. This is pretty straightforward. The Roth IRA is not re uh, required to be reported on the 1135, just like traditional IRAs are not required to be reported on um, T1135. So um, when you're completing your T1135 for your other non-registered investments, you don't need to include this on the actual, um, on the actual form. Um, so let's also talk about inheriting so inheriting a Roth IRA so this is of course much different than if you um, than if you actually uh, move to Canada with your Roth IRA this will be a little bit different if you are a US citizen versus not a US citizen but generally speaking it should be pretty close um, if you inherit a Roth IRA from an individual you'll have 10 years to defer income if you choose to do so um, on on that account. But by year 10, you have to fully deregister the plan. So this is under the new rules that were put out a few few years ago, where you were, before the new rules, you were essentially allowed to defer taxation of Roth for as many years as you, um, as you needed to. Uh, but of course, they changed the rules because, you know, with the compounding effect of money, if you left money, especially significant money in a Roth for 30, 40 years, it would grow to a pretty significant sum and, and never be taxed. So right now you receive an inherited IRA, you have 10 years to take those those distributions, which is still a long time. So the, 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 the tax advantage of that inherited IRA over many inherited accounts, I mean, we don't have, unless, you know, um, you have accounts that are going to uh, spouses, when you're talking about something like an RSP, that gets fully taxed once a second spouse passes away. So huge advantage to be able to um, pass down your your Roth IRAs to your um, 
your beneficiaries because you still get that 10 year window where you can defer tax. Um, so let's also talk about, um, oh, here, let's, what we, what, we, what we need to talk about is, and this is something we get a question about all the time. How do I file a late Roth IRA election? So the Roth IRA election actually doesn't get filed with CRA. So it gets filed with the competent authority, which is the branch that bridges the, um, uh, the administration between um, the, the treaty for Canadian and U.S. purposes. So that's where that, actu- that, that, um, that election goes. Now, if you have not filed the election, uh, which can be quite scary if you if you actually have a sizable Roth and you want to you want to distribute funds from the from the account. If you've not filed the election, you can file the election late with the competent authority, attaching a cover letter to it. Now, what I would say if you f- have, have, have if you need to file this election late, reach out to a cross border tax professional to make sure that you do it properly. I mean, we've had success in in doing this, but we you know we don't tend to run into a lot of people that need to file uh, late Roth elections. We talk a lot of people before they even come to Canada. Uh, but I know when, when the rules first got announced and the bulletin first got announced, we did a lot of late elections, uh, but we had a really good connection at the, um, at the competent authority that was new and we were sending them through. We haven't done a lot of them lately because we don't need to. So make sure you talk to somebody before you just fire it in there because um, it could be problematic. But you, you, you should be able to file that, that late. Uh, but right now, administratively, they might have some position at the department that I'm not aware of. So you want to really talk to a cross-border professional before you do anything, uh, do anything quick. And finally, all, all I'd say about this, and once again, we, we're talking very generally right now. I mean, any of these questions about Roth IRAs and, and taxation in general is something you want to sit down with somebody uh, with, with a competent uh, account to really go through. Uh, this is really just for educational purposes. The deferral of the Roth is really, especially, I mean, the, the Roth IRA gets... Um, deferred for 10 years if you receive it as an inheritance. But generally speaking, that account can remain deferred um, well, well into your later years. And that's the real advantage. You you have a $100,000 Roth IRA that you've accumulated and you're 30 years old and you can stretch that for another 40, 50 years. I mean, the growth within that account will be significant if you don't if you don't touch it. And that's where the planning comes in, where you start recognizing what you need to pull from, which accounts for retirement, which ones do you leave in there? And that's the job of, you know, sitting down with a cross-border tax and financial and or a wealth planning individual to figure out what makes the most sense. But really, you know, there's a huge advantage there to stretching that Roth out over uh, many decades um, and compounding that that wealth tax-free. So I hope, I hope this was helpful. Uh, once again, very general conversation about Roth IRAs and how they relate to... Um, Canadians um, and, and U.S. citizens moving, moving into Canada. Um, certainly haven't touched on everything. Um, if you have any questions about your Roth IRA, if you're thinking of moving to Canada, if you're in Canada and you have a Roth IRA or you're expecting to receive a Roth IRA as a part of an inheritance, feel free to reach out, phil at philhogan.com. Uh, you can reach me at 250-661-9417. Once again, big thanks to everybody for all their support and uh, positive uh, feedback about the podcast and the website. Um, everybody on the Facebook page continues to be awesome with their engagement, all their questions and helping other members. Um, so yeah, once again, don't, uh, don't hesitate to uh, reach out. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.